All right, let's move on to the wide receivers. And my goodness, Jamison Williams, John Mechie, and of course, Slade Bolden move on to the NFL. And the, the amount of production is crazy good, especially for the first two. All right, we got a sampling during games down this stretch when it was either Jamison Williams having to leave the game because of a targeting uh, call. And then, of course, later in the national championship game, he is taken out. John Mechie misses the playoffs that we saw certain members of this highly talented backup wave step in and maybe not quite hit uh, the target in regards to what's expected of an Alabama wide receiver. Your thoughts about how these guys will battle starting in the spring. This is going to be probably the most intriguing room here, Mark, and it's because who develops that chemistry, that flow with Bryce Young? Who becomes that guy or group of guys that Bryce can trust out of this group? Because now these are all guys that either came in with Bryce or they came in a class or a couple of classes after Bryce. Bryce inherited a, a, a John Mechie. He inherited a Slade Bold, and he was blessed to get a Jamison Williams from the transfer portal. But now these are all guys that all came with him or came a class or two after him. So this, this becomes a very intriguing group here because, like you mentioned, you bring back a Ja'Cory Brooks, and here's a guy that was one of those guys that had to step up when a John Mechie went down, when a Jamison Williams went down. And Ja'Cory Brooks, we saw he made the big catch against Auburn in the Iron Bowl to tie the game at 10 and force the crazy four overtimes. Now, Alabama won the game by two at Jordan-Hare. Ja'Cory Brooks also had a big touchdown in the Cotton Bowl against Cincinnati. So he's made some big plays. He's had some drops, but he's made some big plays also. Then you look at and a J.I. Hall who exploded in the spring game last year. And folks going, oh my gosh, this guy needs to start when he had the four catches for 72 yards at Brian Denny. But it did not materialize into the regular season, of course. And we've seen where Coach Saban mentioned, you know, he had to get some things squared away, you know, off the field and becoming that player and that individual off the field that he needs to be. Well, late in the 2021 campaign, uh, Hall got better with that. And you saw where he was rewarded with some playing time in the national championship game, but wasn't quite ready for the moment just then. And he admitted to that on social media. He did. So now it comes back to how much has that moment grew him in terms of the maturity of understanding, okay, I had that moment. I wasn't quite ready for that moment. Now I'm ready to become the receiver that I need to be in terms of having that chemistry and that flow with Bryce Young. So there's a J.I. Hall. Then you have guys like Christian Leary and JoJo Earl, two really good slot guys. Christian Leary, a bit faster than Earl, Earl more quick than fast. But now you have an Aaron Anderson as a freshman in here from Louisiana, a complete track burner, and a guy that can create that separation. And as you, and I, and as you know as well as I do, Mark, speed kills in college football. And we saw that in the national championship game. When Jamison Williams went down, Kirby Smart was like, okay, they don't have anybody else that can do what number one does. So we can now lock up these receivers, take them out their element, bring pressure to Bryce Young, because Alabama does not have that guy like a Jamison Williams that can burn a defense and that can dictate how a defense should play Alabama. That can change the entire paradigm of a football game on the field with his speed. So Aaron Anderson, a freshman, has that type of acceleration that can change the whole paradigm on the field. So spring ball between uh, Anderson, Earl, Christian Leary, that's going to be fun. Who wins the slot? Who commands that type of attention from the slot that Jamison Williams did just a season ago? And then you have guys like Trayshawn Holden, who came in with Bryce Young, from California, you know, roommates with Bryce Young. You know, does that does that finally click? Does that roommate magic between Bryce and Holden finally click with each other? That's going to be a fun developing story there. And then Jermaine Burton, having him come in from Georgia via the transfer portal. You know, how does this look like? Does he play at the top of the formation? Is he at the bottom? What's that relationship like between he and Young? So 
I look at this group of receivers right here, Mark, it's which guy or which group of guys quickly hits it off with Bryce Young and the reigning Heisman Trophy winner feels like I can trust this particular person. That's what that's going to come down to. Fascinating. Fascinating at the wide receiver position, no doubt, because as you say, Jermaine Burton comes in. He wasn't like a number one guy off the charts, like a Jamison Williams, Jerry Judy kind of guy, but certainly proved productive consistently for a championship caliber team. So he's not uh, not accustomed to the the big stage and the big moments. And then you've got this host of players that at times you saw that spark, you saw that glimpse of what they could be, but then we saw the disappointments with a couple just enormous drops in the national championship game where Bryce Young just placed it on a dime and it didn't get done there in the fourth quarter. Uh, so it will be fascinating.